Bronx fans, my name is Jordan Jackson, and we finally have some exciting news to share with you about hockey. Uh, I know everyone's been craving it. We here at the Frontenacs have been as well. Uh, and to jo joining me to do that today is head coach and general manager, Paul McFarland. Paul, how are you doing today? Great, Jordan. How are you doing? I'm doing really well. I'm really excited to, to get things going and, and look at next season a little bit here. And of course, that all starts tomorrow night. That's Wednesday, May 5th at 7 p.m. with the first ever Real Canadian Superstore represented Ontario Hockey League Priority Selection Lottery. How do you feel about that, Paul? Yeah, it's exciting. I think, uh, you know, obviously our scouting staff, coaching staff, uh, uh, myself, uh, we've all been working really hard to get organized for the draft. And uh, I think uh, it's obviously going to give us some information on when we're going to be selecting and, and what, where our picks will obviously line up throughout the draft. So it's going to be an exciting day. And I think uh, just because it's a process that we're not used to going through at this level, uh, it definitely adds to the excitement. And uh, I know uh, for us, we'll be, uh, you know, sitting on uh, pins and needles to, to find out where, obviously, uh, we get to select. And it should be an exciting day tomorrow. Of course, everyone will be joining you on those pins and needles because uh, every team across the league uh, has an equal opportunity at picking first overall this year. Uh, and like I said earlier, that's the first time that's ever happened. So. Uh, how does that change things? Uh, I know I know it's hard to come up with a way to uh, fairly distribute the picks without uh, any games last year, but how, how does that affect your uh, strategy moving forward? Yeah, you know, I think the OHL and uh, the league as a whole has done a great job of uh, obviously coming up with this uh, philosophy and pro process, and it's probably the, it is the most equitable way for us to go through this process just based on obviously the events that have occurred. And uh, I know uh, for us, at the end of the day, uh, we don't have any control, uh, no, nor does anybody else over where kind of, uh, you know, ball, so to speak, drops. But I think ultimately it just gives us uh, more direction as to when we're going to be picking and where our picks line up. And all, all that's great information for us to have as we start to get more and more prepared for, for the draft itself. Uh, this is just the first piece of the draft. Obviously, the actual uh, priority selection itself takes place in June. Uh, also a first, uh, at least since the draft went online. Uh, this will be a two-day event, so June 4th and June 5th, with rounds one and three, one through three taking place on the 4th, and then the rest uh, through round 15 on the 5th. Uh, how does that change your structure? I know uh, in the past, you've kind of gathered in a room at the, at the hotel and, and kind of made your picks, but uh, this year is a lot different with everything being over uh, online and through Zoom. Yeah, I think it's great. I think it's a great idea uh, by, by, again, the league. I think uh, it's going to uh, definitely uh, put a little bit more emphasis on, emphasis on the night one, uh, obviously having, you know, the first three rounds and those selections included in that part of the process and uh, trying to highlight those players probably a little bit more so uh, and award them with a little bit more limelight. And the reality of it is, as we know, uh, the second day is just equally as important to, to make sure we identify players that uh, are, are going to put on the front jersey and part of our development program uh, as we move forward. So I think both days are exciting. I think having the break uh, in between uh, days uh, at the end of the day will get us an opportunity uh, at, at that evening and obviously the next morning to kind of reset our draft board and and have a bit more strategy uh, as uh, maybe when it happens on the fly, uh, you don't have as much time to be able to make those decisions. So uh, for us, it'll give us a little bit more time to evaluate where we're at and prioritize probably players that we really do feel strongly about uh, for the next day. I know for ourselves, we have two fourth round picks, which will start uh, day two of that draft. So that's going to be uh, high on our priority list to make sure we're organized uh, as well for that part of the draft. One last change that takes place this year in the draft is uh, the actual order itself. Instead of going uh, one through 20 and then back to one through 20 for the second round, uh, this year will be more of, a, as they call it, a snake draft, where uh, 20 will also pick at 21. Uh, you just reverse the order uh, between every round. So. Obviously, that changes up the strategy a little bit. Uh, we won't know how for us until, uh, obviously, we find out the lottery results. But uh, do you think that'll really shake things up in this year's draft? Well, I think for us, it, it definitely you know, you could have, obviously, big gaps or, or close, close gaps in your picks, depending on how it all falls. But uh, at the end of the day, for us in our process, getting ready for the draft, uh, we're evaluating players and everyone, uh, like every team, you're putting your list together and, and ranking players uh, based on how you see their potential. And so at the end of the day, uh, we're going to go through that process regardless of where we pick. And I think that's uh, the one big advantage that, that for our process standpoint for this year, the, the scouting staff and working with our coaching staff as well, um, that, you know, we haven't had any idea where you're picking. So I think you're really just going about it with, a, with an open mind and trying to make 
uh, the best decisions uh, based on what you see and how you evaluate players and you're not worried about uh, necessarily where you pick at this stage. Of course, like everything else uh, this year with COVID, uh, there's a bit of a challenge uh, evaluating players for you guys. You can't go to the ranks and, and uh, scout the way you're normally uh, used to scouting. So how, uh, how did that process play out for you and your scouting staff this year, uh, being able to look at the guys that you plan on picking this year? Yeah, no, no question. It had definitely had its unique challenges, but at the same time, I think uh, uh, we were still able to get a lot of a lot of stuff done. And uh, you know, because of the advancements in technology, uh, being able to scout through video, etc., there's a lot of different ways now that we have access to information and access to players for that matters. So, uh, in some ways, I think uh, it was challenging. In other ways, I think the way we do things now has, has really grown and forced us to be creative. And even you know, things like this where you're on Zoom, obviously. Uh, being able to do that with prospects and their families, um, all those types of things are, are great adds to that, that process and allows us to gain uh, more valuable information. And at the end of the day, that the draft is really just step one in our the development process for our players. And uh, we understand after we select players, there's a lot of work that needs to get put into their development. And uh, that's really where uh, the work lies for us. So we're excited about uh, the work we've put in as a group, as an organization to get us prepared for this uh, draft and we're going to continue to use all the time that we have to, to do that but uh, like I said there's a lot of work to be done ahead of after that and uh, that's what excites us the most. The last uh, major change is changes more personally for you. Uh, you've been through the draft before at the OHL level uh, many times as a head coach which you will do again this year but this year you've added the GM title to your role. Uh, how does that affect your role on that day and, and the decision making process? Yeah, we're excited. I think uh, collectively as a group, uh, like I said, our, our scouting staff led by obviously Aaron Van Lusen and uh, our coaching staff, uh, we've all uh, put a lot of time and effort uh, together uh, into this year's draft class and uh, with our scouting process, um, obviously, you know, getting to know some of the players, their families, uh, our analytics group, uh, we're trying to, you know, take information from everybody and, and then collectively we'll make uh, what we feel is the best decisions for uh, who are the next Frontenacs. And so I think it's an exciting time. I know uh, we're definitely going to be excited um, for our first selection and all the selections after that. And as I said, I think the most exciting part for, for us as an organization is, uh, you know, after we do get to call those names and they become part of the Frontenac organization, they then become part of our development process. And we get a chance to really work with those players on a daily basis and, and monitor their progress um, to hopefully see them in, in those Frontenac jerseys as soon as possible. Well, Paul, the draft's only a month away, so I'm sure you have lots to do right now. We'll let you get going uh, and get working on some of that stuff. Appreciate you taking the time today to, to talk with us a little bit about the lottery and the upcoming draft. Yeah, thanks, Jordan. Always great to see you. Fans, you can make sure to check out the OHL Priority Selection Lottery presented by Real Canadian Superstore. That's Wednesday, May 5th at 7 p.m. You can watch it on the OHL YouTube channel. Follow it on all social media channels and, of course, on OntarioHockeyLeague.com. Be sure to check that out. That leads us into the draft in June. For now, we'll let you go, but we're excited to have some more hockey news ahead. Take care.